Gan hound has been a recognizable breed since approximately 4,000 BC as the hunting dog of the royal family. A swift sight hound, he pursued gazelle, snow leopards, and hare while followed by huntsmen on horseback. In this country, the Afghan hound has enjoyed success in the show ring, lure coursing, obedience, and agility. This is Afghan hound number 21. Pablo Picasso's Afghan celebrated in Chicago's Daily Plaza in the form of a giant sculpture. I think one of the things you want to look out for in the Afghan is those hip bones, that ring in the tail, and that natural uh, coat pattern. That happens naturally. It's not clipped or stripped. And this is Bella. She's a beautiful, beautiful female to kick off kick off the show. You know, Afghans, of course, have won the most hound, had the most placements in the hound group. So they're very popular. They're beautiful and elegant. But remember, they're a serious hunter. And Bella from Chile. Congratulations on your Thank breed. Thank you. The descendant of the colonial Virginia hounds, the American English Coonhound was developed to run fox by day and raccoon by night. The American English Coonhound has the strength, grace, and attitude of a well-conditioned athlete. The breed is pleasant, alert, okay. confident, and back. sociable with both humans and dogs, possessing a kind, hungry expression. This is American English Coonhound, number six. And this is the first of many coon hounds tonight. This is Chunk. I think these breeds uh, play particularly to what Mrs. Trotter was saying at the beginning and about functionality. Coon hound people actually not only exhibit the dogs in confirmation, but they work them. We heard the down and back, a little direction there for sizing up. That's right. So Ms. Trotter will take the dogs down and back to watch their gait coming and going. The American Foxhound was developed to hunt fox and coyote over the rough terrains of North America. These hounds can hunt individually or in packs, differentiating them from English foxhounds. They enjoy the company of both other dogs and humans and are jovial, if not clowning, in nature. This is American Foxhound, number seven. Well, I gotta love a dog that's jovial in nature but not, uh, <laughs> not clowning. They're howls can carry for miles. Got to be careful <laughs> where your neighbors are. <laughs> well, they got to love dogs like we do. That's right. You'd always keep this dog on leash also. They're, they they want to go and hunt. And uh, of course, this is Jackson, who we've seen in this group before. Yeah, and Lisa Miller is the breeder here. Kiari Fox Downs, um, very well known, well established, lots of success in this breed. George Washington playing a key part in the American Foxhounds development, uh, keeping a pack at Mount Vernon. You see they're picking up the bait. There may have been some, uh, some treats dropped, and now we're going to pick it up so that Jackson is not distracted. The Basenji is an ancient African hunting dog. It's only been found outside his native Africa since 1930. While known as the barkless dog, he is not mute. Fanciers find his chortles and yodels charming. The Basenji is intelligent, strong-willed, with a mischievous sense of humor, and requires an owner who shares those traits. This is Basenji, number nine. So this is Dark Moon's Black Tie Affair, and as I said earlier, some dogs start their careers here. This dog is just over a year old, oh. so he's really just starting his campaign. It's a huge win for a new dog. You know, we talk a lot about some of the veteran dogs that may be retiring. Some new stars actually get started here at Westminster. That's Annie, right. The youngest ever to win Best in Show. We mentioned nine months at, at the top of the show, Gail. Zorro, I'm told, loves to chase a laser pointer. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> well, you got to have right? skill to do that. These passengers, you want to see uh, that tight ring tail, the, right. the wrinkles in the forehead. They're very alert, very curious, very and intelligent. Watch them go from the side. This is a real characteristic side gate for this breed. All the way back to ancient Egypt. The easily recognizable Basset Hound is a long, low scent hound of ancient French ancestry. He is persistent on the trail and has been used mostly on rabbits. His majestic head, long velvety ears, wrinkled brow, and dark eyes lend him that soulful expression. His gentle nature makes him a great companion and a family dog. This is Basset Hound, number 11. And in the great history of, of this event, of this, uh, the, the most important dog show, you go back to Time Magazine, and they had their 28th edition of Basset Hound on the cover. And then later, years later, 
Uh, it was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, used in uh, Smokey and the Bandit, uh, this uh, type of dog, and also logo for uh, Hush Puppies. Well, about. they're a crowd favorite, of course, and, and this dog in particular, Pepe, has won his national specialty. He won Best of Breed at the AKC National Championship. Certainly a very accomplished right around, example of the breed. Yeah, they're a walking hunter. So you're, you're going to see uh, some dogs here that are running with horses. These are walking with a hunter. So they have that slow, methodical way of covering the ground. The Beagle is a compact scent hound coming in two sizes, under 13 inches and between 13 and 15 inches. Whether baying at a fresh brown scent or on the lap of an adoring child, cool. the Beagle's comical nature and hardiness make it an excellent family pet. This is 13-inch Beagle, number 46. Don Sturge, you would recognize this Beagle. We talked about your judging ability, having judged in this show at the Piers over here in New York. You were judging Dachshunds and Beagles. This is Chester, of course, shown by Christian Rangel. But, but Gail, you got to be careful as a judge not to be <laughs> partial. <laughs> That's right. So cute. Beagles originated as trackers of rabbits and hare. Bred to hunt in large packs, they still possess keen sense of smell and a serious tracking abilities. Two beagles have been best in show at Westminster in 2008, Uno, and in 2015, Miss P. This is 15-inch beagle, number 30. Thank you, sir. Let's see if uh, let's see if Tam. Tam can be another, the third beagle, right? <laughs> uh, that's what everyone wants. They want to get that best in show ribbon. Yeah, he's one of our top winners this year. He's from Canada, but he, he exhibited a lot in the U.S. this year, put him in the rankings. Right. Gorgeous head, beautiful eye expression. You want that melting hound expression in a beagle and that beautiful brush tail. Canada has the most of uh, the 14 countries that are all 50 states are represented, but Canada has the most entries right outside the of the U.S. Yep. And Doug, actually, the handler, Doug Belter, does a great job with this dog. Yes. He's really got him in great condition. And Snoopy, the most popular beagle. <laughs> the black and tan coonhound is an old scent hound descended from a careful combination of the foxhound and the bloodhound. A true American breed, these agile, powerful dogs are known for their beautiful, mournful ball and their long ears. He is known as a specialist on raccoon, but does well hunting other game. This is Black and Tan Coonhound, number seven. And the name uh, Tux, so very appropriate. That's right. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Carlin Black Tie Affair, I love it. He's just only a year and a half old, so another That's young another dog. Youngster. Those ears, that, that, that thin leather right uh, hanging down, that's to catch the scent when they're out there working. But and they're really soft. Yeah, it's like velvet. You feel them, it is. Yeah. It's like velvet. They're just a wonderful breed. Do well in, uh, in search and in therapy work. That's on your wing. That way. The Bloodhound is an ancient breed, traced back over a thousand years. This gentle giant of a scent hound excelled as a hunting companion and is renowned for his keen sense of smell. Today, the bloodhound's tracking instinct is prized by law enforcement in seeking missing children, hikers, escaped criminals, and other lost people. This is bloodhound number eight. This is Heather. She, uh, she had the working, uh, hound group winner a few years ago, yeah? She did. She definitely did with Nathan. And uh, this dog, of course, is a, has a, well, I shouldn't say of course. This is new, but he has a trick dog title, ah. which is one of the new sports, of course, AKC Sports. Got a real typical way of going, that ambling, easy way. Lots of skin. The blue tick coonhound is an athletic, compact, speedy, and well-muscled hound, all of which helps it in trailing and treeing raccoons and other small game. Its name comes from the dark blue coat pattern covered in ticking and featuring black spots. In America, blue ticks were referred to as English coonhounds for many years. This is blue tick coonhound number six. Smokey, the University of Tennessee's mascot, uh, blue tick uh, coon hound taken for, and Huckleberry Hound, uh, famous. <laughs> we all remember that, the cartoon days. <laughs> we do. This breed is known as being very sleek and racy. They're not supposed to be heavy boned, but they can work all night. They're a nocturnal hunter. And Bear uh, carries around a throw pillow uh, that he kind of adopted as a puppy. Hey, whatever. Maybe, maybe he does it at night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Sleeps> nocturnal. <well>. <laughs> <laughs> The Borzoi was once known as the Russian Wolfhound. 
This sight hound is a courser of immense strength and stamina bred by Russian aristocracy in the 17th century to hunt wolf in large packs of a hundred or more hounds. Today they will still chase anything that moves, but their intelligence and gentle nature also make them a wonderful companion. This is Borzoi, number 19. Now we started to uh, verge into that sight hound category, right? We've seen a lot of scent hounds you know, so far, and uh, you see the body shape. See that nice rise over the loin? That helps them at the gallop, helps them be able to extend. The uh, boys, are, uh, boys are a fixture in literature, going back to Tolstoy, uh, George Bernard Shaw, F. Thank Scott you. Fitzgerald. Right around, please. Many of the breeds are very ancient breeds that have rich histories, and that's something we'd love to talk about. They can still be your family pet today, but they have a very long history. The Chernetko del Etna is an ancient breed that has thrived in Sicily for thousands of years. A hunter of small mammals and fowl, the Chernetko is a hardy, compact dog. The Chernetko has a strong, independent temperament necessary for hunting, but is friendly and affectionate and can be a good family pet. This breed enjoys mental stimulation and excels at a variety of hunting events, such as hunting, agility, and coursing. This is Chernetko del Etna, number 14. This is Zoe. We've done a lot of media with this breed. They're wonderful. They're just such a nice city dog, clean, smart, really easy to take care of. But they have, again, have a, they have a long history. And I love watching that side gate, springy yeah, trot. Very distinct. Developed in Germany two and a half centuries ago to hunt badger, the long low body of the dachshund works efficiently underground. This unique breed comes in three varieties, long hair, smooth and wire hair, and two sizes, standard in miniature. The long haired dachshund's glistening longer coat gives him defense against elements as well as an elegant appearance. This is long haired dachshund, number 68. And this is Carlos Puig, as we know, has shown many top dachshunds. And this is Burns, who has recently broken the record. Of course, Don, you had your hands on him. Today. I did. This is a beautiful dog. Uh, he's seven years old, gorgeous head, body shape, um, in beautiful condition. And that was a 50-year standing record that he just broke. He's now the all-time top-winning long-haired dachshund in history. Maybe a good sign. Maybe dachshund. This is the breakthrough year to win. Best in show has never happened. And a smooth gait. Oh, he's beautiful. <laughs> Considered the original dachshund, the smooth epitomizes the breed's type. No matter if it's a standard smooth or a miniature, it is easy to see the prominent fore chest, long low body, and fluid movement that are breed hallmarks. This is smooth dachshund, number 70. Of course, as, as Michael just said, this is the original, but uh, there's something very unique about their front, of course, the, the keel that is out so that they can do their job. And that's it, they, they go to ground and they're working in tunnels. So you wanna think about that body shape, helping them to navigate the tunnel and through the rocks. A lot like a shoehorn actually. And, and of course their temperament, you know, Chris, I've lived with a few of them. They're, they'll take over the household, look out. If you can handle me and Don, you can handle anything. <laughs> <laughs> and Picasso owned a smooth standard uh, dachshund. So that's artists right. are temperament a little bit. So they probably worked well together. I can see that, those are beautiful lines. The newest of the three dachshund varieties, the wire hair, incorporates the rough coat of a terrier. The distinctive facial furnishings of a beard and bushy eyebrows add even more expression to the classic dachshund head. This is wire hair dachshund, number 67. Thank you, sir. To the hound group signing back. And of course, you know, everyone has their favorite coat variety. Mm -hmm. Some people love the wire so much they would never have a smooth or True. a long hair. True. <laughs> This dog in particular, it was actually the deciding factor for me today. He had the most spectacular coat texture, really hard wire coat, beautiful body shape, good bone, great on his legs. We're live here in New York listening to Don Sturz, Gail miller Beischer, Chris Myers, and the first of the seven groups here on FS1 from Madison Square Garden. Winston's showing wonderfully. Yeah, covering ground nicely. The English Foxhound is an athletic, strong, and stocky hound with a keen sense of smell. They were bred for fox hunting in packs with huntsmen following on horseback. Most English Foxhounds today are still used in this traditional role. 
Stamina, good nose, and determination continue to make him a prize companion in the field. This is English Foxhound, number seven. Here we have whiskey being shown by Katie uh, Bernardin. You may remember her, Bernardin. She won best in show, um, or won reserve best reserve in show best last yes. year with her giant schnauzer. Yes. This is a handsome, handsome breed. Um, really classic. You saw these in paintings, you know, from back right. in the day. Like most hounds, independent thinkers. Beautiful bone, like a column. See how the bone goes right down to the foot, solid. Gorgeous eyes, that Thank black you. pigment right around the rims. Please. They're an independent thinker like most hounds, though, so that, you know, you have to know that when you, when you bring a hound into your home. Yeah. They may not listen to your every command. Quaker. There you go. That's easy. I would have said that in the first place. New to Westminster <laughs> this year is the Grand Basset Griffon Vendéon. Bred as a rabbit and a hare hunter in France, his name translates into the large, low, shaggy dog of the Vendée. This is Palomino, who's the... His sweet-faced, long-haired dog with his mustache, beard, and profuse eyebrows suggests the look of a worldly but amiable Frenchman. The PBGV possesses a great stamina, speed, and courage. They are intelligent, friendly pack dogs that get along well with others. This is Grand Basset Griffon Vendéon, number 11. Did he say PBGV? He did. He meant GBGV. <laughs> <laughs> I got the heebie-jeebies trying to say that name. The Greyhound almost certainly originated in the Middle East about 500 BC. This speedy hunter accompanied by the Romans throughout Europe and was used to coarse game. Powerful yet elegant and even tempered, their loyal, the fun-loving Greyhound is a rewarding companion. This is Greyhound number 11. Thank you very much. Storm thinks he's, uh, at least according to his owner, Hamler, thinks he's a, a lap dog. Well, a lot of big dogs Thank do you. think they're a lap dog. They're comfortable. That's all right. Well, and greyhounds, although they're very strong, powerful breed, oftentimes are couch potatoes. Absolutely. I've had a couple, and uh, they, they like one good sprint, and they're back in and on the couch. <laughs> this is a lovely dog, beautiful shape. And as you look at all the sight hounds, a lot of them make reference to greyhound shape. This is what they're talking about. Because it is such an old breed that yes. it was influential on many others. General Custer and Rutherford B. Hayes, president, owning this breed. The Harrier was created in England as a medium-sized hare hound with records dating back to the 13th century. Although not well known, this is a sturdy utilitarian pack hound bred for stamina and endurance rather than outright speed. This is Harrier, number six. And Courier is a member of the only Harrier hunt pack in the USA. Explain that for me. Wow, that, that's, I mean, that's an amazing fact. The, um, that they go out and actually work a fox hunt, and they work as a team. Uh, they're out there um, chasing the fox down, scenting it. And actually, Cora here at, does that in the Mojave Desert, which seems wow. like a strange place to be hunting hare. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they will hunt. They want to hunt, and that's the thing to know about these dogs when you bring them into your home. I have a line, Don, about hunting hair with you, but I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I care. The Ibethan hound traces back to ancient Egypt, dating at least to 3400 BC. The dog depicted in hieroglyphics that guarded the tombs of the pharaohs is almost indistinguishable from today's Ibethan. Prized for its keen hunting ability, its primary quarry is rabbit. This is Ibethan Hound, number 16. So Julep here is, is also owned, it was all, excuse me, Bunny, who we all remember, oh, yes. right? Who won the group in 03 and 04, is the same owner. So she is another top winning Ibethan Hound. Are judges aware of, of that when, or are they just looking and measuring, they don't care about the relationship? I'm, I'm going to say that, you know, there may be some awareness, you know, if you're going around to the shows, but when you're in here judging, you block that all out. It's about what's happening tonight. This is a unique breed. See how they move in the front? That kind of that lift has to do with their front construction. All about hunting. Yes. The tallest of all AKC recognized breed, the Irish Wolfhound's power combined with its keen sight and swiftness makes him unique among sight hounds. This hound should possess the speed to catch a wolf and the strength to kill it. For households that can accommodate their needs, Irish wolfhounds typically make a trustworthy and gentle companion. 
This is Irish Wolfhound, number 15. And, and this is Kenzie, female. Now, according to the AKC, the, this is the tallest of all dog breeds. Uh, three feet at shoulder, is that the yeah. best way to measure? The yeah, they're, they're a breed where you know, more substance, more bone, size and power are really important, but keeping it functional. It's and a beautiful, course, beautiful thank female. You very much. Of right course, the around. coat and the structure of the dog is, ba is all based on what they're originally bred to do. So they have a coarse coat. Again, that reference to greyhound-like body. Right, right. As a loyal companion to the Vikings, the Norwegian elk hound was originally used to hunt moose and other big game, which it still does today in its native Norway. This hardy hunter did double duty as a guard dog for campsites and a herder of flocks. They were first imported to America at the turn of the 20th century. This is Norwegian elk hound, number 10. So Ben here is uh, nine years old, and we always talk about the structure of a dog. If they're put together right, they'll last forever. They can show until they're very much a mature dog. A nine-year-old dog still in great shape. That means he's constructed properly. Yeah, this is a breed where you want them short-backed, you want leg underneath them, right you want those around, prick please. ears and that tight curled tail. And gorgeous, of course, gorgeous double coat. This is Pat's breed. Yes. So interestingly, Miss Trotter's probably going to be a little harder on this breed. Yeah, if I was the exhibitor, I'd yeah. probably be really nervous. <laughs> The and Otter Hound is an way. ancient breed, but it wasn't until the 19th century in England that it came to prominence, being used as a pack dog to trail and kill otter. Of all the hounds, this is the only true water dog with a waterproof coat and webbed feet. This is Otter Hound, number 11. And the name of this one, Tiger Woods. But, you know, I wanted to ask about, because when you, we met with the judges, and it was interesting, and you've both done this, they, they said when there was a, a specific breed that they were close to, they were. They were much more harsher, uh, more specific, because they felt they knew more in making the judgment call. Correct. You're just more aware of the details of that breed. And the, of course the outer hound has a lot of dog under that hair. You want bone. You want spring of rib. Yet they have a loose right kind of movement, very free-flowing. That coat's protective for them. Congrats on your win. The Petit Basset Griffon Vendéon, or PBGV, is a pack dog, <laughs> a French hound breed with natural, rough, wiry coat and an outgoing, active, and independent personality. It is the shortest of the four Griffon Vendéon breeds, hence the Petit, meaning small in his name. This is Petit Basset, Griffon Vendéon, number six. This is Calamity Jane. She won the breed last year, uh -huh. so she's back. And uh, Janice Hayes handles her, and, and they've had a very successful year. When they name a breed, PBGV, I mean, do they think <laughs> about the name? <laughs> it'd be, it'd be I, tough. I doubt that they had thought of that acronym, no. But it's the fact, you know, it's the elements of that name. Right. You know, that describes the coat, describes the type of body that, that are that, that That's are in that right. name. That's right. So Petite is small, Basset is low to ground, Griffon is rough coated, and a Vendine, Vendion is the region in France. Thank you. The Pharaoh Hound is one of the oldest known domestic dogs. In many of the depictions on Egyptian temples and tombs dating back to 4400 BC, prove the antiquity of these hounds. It is thought that the pharaoh hound was brought by the Phoenicians to the Mediterranean islands of Malta and Gozo. This is pharaoh hound number 12. Many of these breeds, especially in the hound group, have helped man for centuries, and this is one of them. Of course, the pharaoh hound's been around for thousands of years and pretty much remains the same. Yeah, I mean, this dog looks like the dog that you saw on the hieroglyphics in the tombs and the pyramids. Interesting note at the bottom there that it was officially in 1979 when this was named the National Dog of Malta, the feral hound. This is Adira, shown by Anna Stropper. Congrats on your win. Where's the kid? A hound of striking color that traditionally brings big game to bay or tree, the plot is an intelligent, alert, and confident dog. Noted for stamina, endurance, agility, determination, and aggressiveness when hunting, the powerful, well-muscled plot combines courage with athletic ability. The loyal and eager to please, the plot is a bold and fearless hunter. This is plot number 11. 
And so, of course, there are several of the different um, hounds that were that are going after large bear and different very large game, and this is one of them. It has to be a very aggressive hunter. It cannot be intimidated, and I don't think they can be. No, and uh, kudos to the breeders. Though. I watched this entry today, and, and there's a nice size entry and really uniform quality that was quite high for a breed that, you know, a number of years ago when they first came in, were kind of all over the place, but good job, breeders. Named after a German immigrant, but created in the U.S. of the state dog of North Carolina. The Portuguese Pedengo Pequeno is the smallest of the Pedengo family. A rustic breed, they're still used to hunt rabbit in their native Portugal. With regular exercise and early training, they make lively and intelligent companions and watchdogs. The Pedengo Pequeno should be longer than tall and may come in two coat varieties, smooth and wire. This is wire-coated Portuguese Pedengo Pequeno number 15. Now, seeing as how I have a seven-year-old at home who is a huge Harry Potter fan, I have okay. to say this is champion Hula's Expecto Patronum, Albus, which is named after Albus Dumbledore. Now, is yes. that why the crowd reacted here <laughs> at Madison Square Garden? Well, I think because it's so cute. I was going to say high on the cuteness I mean, factor. Oh, my goodness. Sure. Yeah, very, like... <laughs> this is the national dog of Portugal, this breed, but look at that. Oh, Ooh, my goodness. look at it. What a move. <laughs> An American breed, the Red Bone Coonhound is a strikingly beautiful solid red coat. He is a passionate, well-driven hunter that loves to please and has the intelligence and stamina to excel in hunting, search and rescue, field trials, or the show ring. The Red Bone is a versatile, courageous hound that makes a wonderful companion. This is Red Bone Coonhound, number eight. Minion, yeah. <laughs> another one. I don't, you get, I don't you think always... he is a minion. I think this is a serious hunting dog. And the nickname Potato Head, which is, uh, <laughs> that's what they, the owner gave. But you, you always talk, Gail, too, and, and Don, about a great family dog, uh, loving, loyal. This fits. This is one of those. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, most of these dogs are not out hunting anymore. Some are no. for sport, for fun, but they're really family, family pets. Congrats on your win. Thank you very much. The Rhodesian Ridgeback is the dog of formidable power, dedication, and courage. As a hunter, he descends from a variety of breeds crossed with the native Ridge dog in southern Africa in the 1800s. The ridge of hair on the back is the identifying mark of this breed. This is Rhodesian Ridgeback, number seven. So one thing in the standards, of course, is when we talk about temperament, and there's something about the Ridgeback. They have a certain aura about them. They're very dignified. They're not usually silly acting out in public. I know they are at home, but... Uh yeah, very, uh, very reserved. I mean, when you're judging them, you get you get that feel, you know, that they're they're checking you out, they're sizing you up. And when you think about, you know, what they were bred to do and the work they did, um, you know, in their home country, you know, protecting the home and uh, out hunting lions. Serious Strong business. character. Serious, serious business. business. <laughs> A Saluki's elegance is deceptive. For millennia, Salukis have hunted in some of the world's most inhospitable regions. Their movement, whether in the show ring or in the coursing field, is the end result of a supremely cur conditioned coursing hound. This is Saluki, number 17. And among the uh, celebrities, uh, you know, when I think of Saluki, I think of uh, the Southern Illinois Saluki and Walt Frazier when we're here in Madison Square Garden. But uh, you think of Jim Belushi, Melissa McCarthy, also in that group. But this dog can run speeds of over 42 miles per hour. And if you, you know, the average Kentucky Derby race horse is around 38 miles per hour. So they probably run right with some of the best horse racing uh, at Churchill Downs. And just watch when this dog comes around. You know, Thank one you of the ways right we've, right we've right. described the way this breed moves is if they're running on hot sand. Just watch how their foot placement goes. See that light springy Have touch on the ground? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Very distinct. The Scottish Deerhound is a rare breed of ancient lineage and is the royal dog of Scotland. Sir Walter Scott called them the most beautiful creatures of heaven. Shown here at Westminster since the very first show in 1877, they are dignified and gentle in temperament. They are a large, rough-coated sighthound bred to pursue game. This is Scottish Deerhound, number 12. And of course, in 2011, Hickory won Best in Show yes. and made history for the breed. The year Let's... I did the hound group, I put up a deerhound as well. Yeah. They're... And tonight we have Gigi. Let's see what she's going to do. Doing. Greyhound shaped body again, that rough coat, it's protective. It's actually one of my favorite breeds. They are really, really sweet and kind. 
as very well as gentle. beautiful. Very gentle. The trick with these sight hounds is for them to keep that shape when they're moving. You see how she's keeping a top line, nice rise of the line, underline, same dog standing as she is moving. The energetic treeing walker coon hound is perfectly suited for tracking and treeing raccoons. Developed from the walker, the Virginia hounds, and the earliest English fox hounds, the treeing walker is a fast alert hunter with a superb endurance. This breed is intelligent, confident, and sociable. This is treeing walker coon hound, number nine. As we're winding through the, the hound group, anything jump out in terms of if you're thinking how the judge is looking, how? I think she's got her work cut out for her, actually, because she came in talking about functionality, and that really translates into how they move and move for their breed. The competition's really deep here. It is. There are a couple that stood out. I, I, they all stand out. You can't really say that. But of course, we all have our favorite breeds. <laughs> you can't get away from that. Those dachshunds and beagles are amazing. Who judged <laughs> those today? <laughs> I also like the basset. The whippet looks go. similar to the greyhound, but is smaller and is a distinct breed. Over a century, this extremely fast sighthound has been used as a rabbit courser and a racing dog in England. The Whippet stamina and power of acceleration are truly striking. This is Whippet, number 25. And this is uh, this is bourbon. If, if bourbon wins, I'll drink to that. <laughs> and whiskey, right? Isn't there a tie-in with whiskey? Yeah, it's a brother-sister rivalry. Yeah, they were both entered today. Whiskey did a tremendous amount of winning last year. I think his sister is poised to uh, take the lead this year, apparently. Lovely, lovely female. Beautiful shape. Gorgeous dark eyes expression. And of course, she's handled by Ch Chelsea Smithy, and Justin, her husband, is who handles whiskey. So, who, well, how's that going to go down tonight? I don't know. I'm impressed by them. I just had them at a show in Virginia a few weeks ago, and they're, they just really get on real well and compete with I each other, know. and then smile and laugh after it's all over. I think that's great. Bourbon and whiskey, top shelf. All right, I'll stop. They both have a shot. How about that? Oh, I love it. <laughs> She pulls out dogs that Bring reflect the fox that. Hound right here, here we go. Him. She's making her Basinji. first cuts. She has the American Foxhound, the Basinji, Basinji the yes. one and a half year old, <laughs> one year old. There we go, Tam, the Beagle. There's the Beagle. Orzoi. Orzoi, very nice. Long hair. Yes. Long hair Dachshund. I got two in the race. Oh, we have a crowd favorite. <laughs> <the> crowd. <laughs> Otter Hound. Oh, nice. lovely. Super Zuby. She can't go wrong here, Chris. These are amazing animals. So it's seven. Whip it. And here comes the whippet. Eight. She's looking at efficiency of going. She's also looking to keep their outlines. <laughs> when we asked, let's listen up about could the crowd influence her? She'll make her selection Sir? of placements. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh my goodness. The long haired dachshund has been pulled out first. Burns with Carlos Quig. <laughs> Top and winning long haired dachshund of all time. Now, Bourbon the Whippet is pulled out second. Tam, the, the Beagle is out I in did. third place. And the Beagle. <laughs> right on and the Basenji. Oh my all goodness, Don. All right. Here we go. I guess you did okay. <laughs> you did, I think you did wonderfully. Oh, let's hear it for the dachshund. Yes. To the long hair dog. Yes. All right. Second to the whippet. <laughs> Third to the beagle. Don, you did your job well earlier. You know what? That's a, a, a great group, kudos folks. to those dogs. This is uh, champion Walmart Solos OMG, shown by Carlos Puig, and I am so <laughs> excited for he and Burns. And at being a dachshund lover and mm -hmm. former dachshund owner, I am so excited that they are going to make it to best in show yes. ring. Yes. And the first of the seven groups. Dachshund has never won Aww. Best in Show. <laughs> it could be uh, as we started the evening on our way to a history-making moment. 
Okay, we are down on the floor. Congratulations, Carlos. I'm hugged out. Okay, so let me get this straight. You are breeder, owner, and handler. Is no, that true? I, br I breed this breed. I am his handler. Okay. My bloodline is behind him. Okay. Um, I showed his great grandfather here. Won the group in '98, 21 years ago. Wow, congratulations to you. <laughs> and I look the same. <laughs> yes, you certainly do. What is this experience like? How different is it showing at Westminster? Oh my God, it's it. It's the epitome. This is a top. <laughs> you can't go any farther up than this. All right. Well, listen, this certainly was a crowd favorite tonight. What should folks at home know about long haired dachshunds? Dachshunds are the best breed in the world. And with that, Period. I guess we can all go home. That's right. Congratulations to you. Thank Best of luck tomorrow. Retires.